Hello, and welcome to this video about on-site balancing. Imbalance is one of the most common failures of rotating machines. Imbalance adversely affects the operational life and reliability of the mechanical parts of machines. On-site balancing is a great type of balancing. It allows you to balance a rotor instantly in its operational position, mounted on its own bearings, and rotating at its operational speed and load. This is beneficial because you can correct the influences of manufacturing and assembly tolerances, temperature effect, load deformation and other local influences. Before balancing itself, it's important to analyse the condition of the machine to confirm that the problem really is in balance. Check the machine before analysis and balancing. Clean the machine, especially undesirable material deposits on the rotor. Tighten the screws and check if any old balancing masses on the rotor are not missing. The most common effects of imbalance are the vibrations are dominant on the speed frequency, the difference between the vibration phases in the horizontal and vertical directions on one bearing is approximately 90 degrees, there is a higher vibration in the horizontal direction than in the vertical direction. On-site balancing starts by the measuring of unbalanced rotor vibration. Then the machine is stopped and a trial mass of known weight is placed on the rotor. Subsequently we determine the effect of the trial mass on the vibration. This data is used to calculate the weight and location of the required correction mass. Make sure the machine is running under stable conditions during the whole balancing job. The speed and load in particular should be the same during the whole process. Make sure you are balancing the machine below its first resonant frequency. The process of balancing is always similar regardless of the number of balanced planes. When doing a balancing job in two planes, you have to do each step twice once for each plane. Now we are going to balance in one plane. The balancing process is based on standard measurements of amplitude and phase on the speed frequency. We can set additional information into the created project. For example, direction of view on the rotor, direction of rotation, Removing or leaving the trial mass, add, meaning mount, or remove, meaning drill, balancing masses. The number of blades for rotors with blades. For balancing according to ISO 1940, we will be asked for more information such as rotor mass, correction radius, and balance quality grade. All settings are very intuitive in VA5. Stick the reflection tape on the shaft and point the speed probe beam onto it while the machine is not running. Always keep your eye on the speed probe position during a balancing job. Anybody from the staff around can accidentally change the position and ruin your balancing. On the VA5 screen the red bearing house is the recommended point for sensor mounting, but you can use any other place which is suitable for measurements. The polar graph is prepared to display measured values. Place the sensor, start the machine and push the enter button. The measurement will be taken. Stop the machine. The red dot in the polar graph shows the current amplitude and phase in the complex plane. Smaller green dots show all values during the measurement. This additional information can be disabled if you don't need it. Enter the weight of the prepared trial mass. The weight can also be negative, which represents removing mass, for example dismounting an old balancing mass. The recommended weight is displayed only if the rotor settings parameters are entered. The recommended position for the trial mass is the opposite of the rotor's heavy spot. 
This location avoids an unwanted increase in vibration during balancing. How to recognize the heavy spot is explained in these videos. Try to always be as accurate as possible about the weight of the mass. Consider also the weight loss when drilling a hole in the rotor and the weight of possible screws for fixing the mass. Mount the trial mass. The trial mass poses high safety risks and can also cause damage to the machine if it falls off during operation. Just to give you an idea, the velocity of our mass is about 600 km per hour if it falls off of the running rotor. Always be sure that the mass is mounted properly. Start the machine and press the start button for measurement. The measurement will be taken. Stop the machine. After the run to measurement, the dynamic factor is displayed. The DFA and DFP, amplitude and phase values, are the response values of standardized trial mass. If you balance the same machine again after some time, then you do not need to measure the run to. Instead of that, you only need to enter the DFA and DFP values on this screen. Moreover, if you have entered correction radius and rotor mass values in the rotor settings menu, the unbalance and bowel quality values according to ISO 1940 are displayed. If the values are satisfactory for you, you don't need to continue with the balancing job. Now the weight and phase, meaning position, of the final balancing mass are displayed. Mount the final mass and remove the trial mass, in our case. The angle is applied from the trial mass position, which represents zero degrees. The direction of the angle is the same as the direction of rotation. For example, plus 57 degrees means from the trial mass position in the direction of rotation. A negative degree value means a position against the direction of rotation. We advise you to double check that you're really fitting the mass in the right place. You can split the correction mass into two arbitrary angles, in case it is not possible to place the correction mass into the calculated position. Enter the value of the first and second angle and the balancing mass will be split into two required angles. If the number of blades has been defined, the final mass is divided between the two nearest blades. The blade number is always counted from the position of the trial mass. It means the trial mass is mounted to blade number 1. You can select other blades in cases where you cannot mount the weight to the nearest blade or blades. When the mass or masses are mounted, you need to check the job. The screen is very similar to Run 1 screen. Start the machine and press the Start button. Take the measurement. After the Run 3 measurement, you can continue with the job if you are not satisfied with the results. These next steps do not require trial mass measurements. After each measurement, the next mass or masses are recommended. The trim screens are very similar to screens described before. You can use however many trims you want. However, if the result is not better after the trim, or is even worse, then more trims make no sense. As can be seen, on-site balancing requires several stops and starts of the machine. For this reason, the machine will usually not be involved in the normal production process. Most of the time spent on on-site balancing is waiting. Waiting for approval of startup and stopping of the machine. Waiting for reaching operating speed. Waiting for stabilization of operation temperature. Waiting for restarts. Waiting for the rotor to stop. Due to high rotor inertia, stopping without braking can take tens of minutes, but do not try to brake the machine by yourself with improvised tools. The time saved is not worth the high risk of injury. As you can see, on-site balancing is pretty easy and intuitive with Adash vibration analyzers. So, go ahead.